this video I want to talk about using a bee smoker. Uh, we'll explain the parts of the smoker, how to operate it, and a bit about the safety, and uh, how, to, how it actually works to keep bees uh, calm and easy to work with. So the smoker is made up of two main parts, the bellows, this part here. When we squeeze that, it forces air through into the can. We get a fire going inside the can, and then when we puff that, this, the air moves up and through and out this funnel part here. So inside the smoker, we have a grate at the bottom, and you can see the funnel, uh, the inside of the funnel there as well. So what we'll do is we'll get started and uh, light that up. Uh, my preference is to use wood shavings. They're, they're sold at agriculture supply uh, locations as animal bedding. So we start the fire with newspaper, just like starting a campfire, and then we add in the wood shavings. Uh, other people use dried cow manure, uh, sumac bobs, quite a variety of materials, but I would caution that you don't want to be using uh, any man-made materials that may have chemicals in them because you're, you do end up breathing quite a bit of smoke. So we'll get this started. We get uh, a sheet of newspaper like that, crumple it up into a loose ball, and then we have a lighter attached to a string here so we don't lose track of that, but I'll light that right inside the pail so that it's out of the wind. Fire moves up so we start at the bottom and then we, once it's going we transfer it into the smoker and as you're transferring it in you puff away at the smoker. So we get flames coming out, you can hear it go woof woof woof, so you know it's going well. There's that woof 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 and we'll pump away at the smoker, we've got flames, we've got a bit of smoke, big handfuls of shavings going in there. And ideally you stand a bit uh, upwind from this. So we just keep adding the shavings in there. And then what we do is take another sheet of newspaper, crumple it up into a ball, and add it on top. So that consolidates all the fuel within there, so that when we tip the smoker over, the fuel all stays in place. I'll just close that lid up there. So you can see now we can tip it like this and the shavings aren't blowing out because of that little newspaper plug we put on the top. When we are lighting a smoker, we don't we make sure we don't leave it sitting on top of where the, the, the debris will be falling, because as you puff the smoker, the air will pick up that debris and blow it into this tube and clog it. So we hold it up in the air while we're, uh, while we're lighting it and you just keep puffing away for a few minutes until it's going nicely there and you can see that smoke is nice and white and if I blow it on my arm it's quite cool. Once it's, if it gets blue or you have any sparks or fl certainly flames coming out of there then that means it's time to add more fuel. Oh, using it in about 15 minutes or so, we'll need to add, add more fuel. And to do that, we just open it up, take out the plug, and, and add, add more fuel as need be. So it's good to practice doing this, uh, so you make sure you're confident in, uh, in uh, getting a smoker going and keeping it, keeping it going. When you're done using it in the bee yard, it is a bit of a safety issue. You've got a fire going in here, and so you can either uh, take the fuel out, dump it on the ground, and stomp it out. You have to be very careful you're going to be doing that. Or you can grab up some grass, bend it in two, give it a bit of a twist, and then screw that in there, and that will plug up the smoker and so it, w it won't continue to burn. Uh, when you're transporting it, it needs to be transported in a way that it's not going to fall over and open up or it could start the vehicle on fire. So we do have to be pretty careful with these when we're uh, transporting them. Um, but that's basically how you get it, get it going. Now to use the smoker, we puff the smoke at the entrance to the colony. So we'll just puff smoke at the entrance there. And that gets the guard bees to go in and they eat honey. So while they're eating honey, they're not defending the hive. The smoke works in three different ways. That's one. It's also a bit of a repellent, so the bees move away from the smoke. 
what makes it easier to put your hands where you want within the hive. Uh, the other thing that the spoke does is it, uh, it interrupts their communication, their scent communication. If one bee becomes agitated, it produces alarm pheromone, and that basically tells all the other bees to respond aggressively. When we puff smoke inside the hive, we can short circuit that communication. All they smell is smoke, and they can't communicate in that manner. But the bees that go in and eat honey, uh, they're busy gorging and filling up on honey, and so that gives them another, something else to do so they're not defending the hive. That's about it for uh, uh, the smoker. Uh, just uh, a word of caution, make sure that you take good care because you do create fires and uh, that's it for now. <laughs>